This is my uh, Logan metal lathe, the model 920. Uh, it has uh, supposedly has a swing of about 11 or 11 and a half inches and a, a length between centers of around 24 inches. Um, based on the um, model number of the bed, which is stamped in the bed, uh, you can see right there on the end, 59619. I believe this lathe was manufactured probably in 1952. Uh, based on information from the uh, Logan website. Um, <clears throat> I bought this lathe used uh, in about 1994, I'm guessing. So I've had it, uh, what, some uh, uh, 18, 20, 24, 25 years, something like that. Um, I bought it from a... Uh, like a Salvation Army store in Dallas, Texas back then. It was, of course, they, they were using it in their, they had been using it in their machine shop for various repairs and stuff. Uh, it had been sitting uh, back in the corner for quite a few years unused when I came across it. Picked it up for a hundred bucks and uh, took it home, cleaned it all up. It turned out that the lathe bed was pretty well worn, particularly up near the headstock. So I completely disassembled it, cleaned it up, had the bed reground, uh, supposedly to within a couple of tenths flatness by uh, Precision Grinding Company in Phoenix, Arizona. Put it back together and I've been using it ever since. Um, last I uh, calibrated it, which has been several years admittedly uh, ago, um, it would still hold uh, a thousandth diameter tolerance uh, between uh, eight inches uh, on a piece of work supported in the headstock. So it's, it's still pretty accurate. Of course, it has uh, adjustments in the feet, which you can use to uh, introduce twist in the bed in order to uh, improve the alignment when need be. But I found that it, uh, it, holds, it holds pretty good tolerances for what I do. Uh, <clears throat> when I first bought the lathe, it had a flat belt. I took a two inch by whatever flat belt and had a counter shaft on the back. Um, pretty inconvenient, noisy, didn't like it. So I converted it over to a V belt. That V belt pulley was machined, actually that's off of an Atlas lathe and I machined it to fit this lathe. And uh, got a one horsepower DC motor uh, mounted on the top there. Um, and that's powered with a 10 amp variac, so continuously variable speed from zero uh, up to 20, I think 2500 RPM on the motor, um, 3500, sorry, 3500 RPM on the motor, which through that pulley reduction gives me a top RPM of about 1700 RPM on that pulley. Of course, I could rearrange things and use a smaller pulley to get a higher speed with it. Seems to be plenty for what, again, for what I do. Not a very elegant looking solution, I know. It's, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. Uh, a lot of uh, people probably don't like the idea of that belt being exposed like that, but as I said, it's, uh, it's very functional for what I do and works quite well. That continuously variable headstock spindle speed is uh, very good. So this, this video is kind of a preamble. Um, I'm gonna take this, uh, uh, plate off of the front of the headstock to expose the bearing. Uh, it has a single ball bearing race uh, at the front of the headstock there. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter ID, 80 millimeter OD uh, ball bearing with a uh, snap ring around the outside to uh, hold it against the headstock casting. And then in the back it has another, you can't see it from here, but it has another smaller bearing and it uses Belleville washers to uh, uh, basically preload the bearings uh, so that they're under constant uh, tension to improve the, uh, the, the accuracy of the, of the spindle. Never been real happy with that single bearing arrangement up there, especially a ball bearing. I replaced the bearing a few years ago, but I'm not convinced that it was a very good quality bearing. And, uh, it feels like for a lathe this size I get more chatter than I would like and uh, not real good surface finish. 
So um, this, this video is, like I said, it's a preamble. I'm going to look at trying to replace that spindle bearing on the front with a Timken roller bearing, tapered roller bearing. Um, I think I can do it without any destructive changes. Uh, we'll have to make some changes, obviously, but I'll, I'll keep things in such a manner that I can always take it back to the original setup uh, if need be. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off that faceplate on the front to expose the bearing.